Very good afternoon and good evening to all the dignitaries and learners and my dear colleagues. As you all know the reason why we have gathered here through the online mode is to welcome the new learners to our JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, Mysuru. Today is the day of the learners to get to know about the new journey and build their future from here. With the divine blessings of His Holiness, Jagadguru Sri Shivaratri Deshikendra Mahaswamiji, I, Dr. Shailaja, cordially welcome you all to this induction program for online learning program of pharmacovigilance of JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, Mysuru. We shall start this program by invoking the blessings of the Almighty through this prayer. Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Dana Sampada which means salutations to the light of the lamp, which brings auspiciousness, health, and prosperity. And Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deepar Jyoti Namostude, which means the lamp, which destroys the enemical feelings and salutations to the light of the lamp. We have, excuse me, we now have with, uh, with us our enthusiastic director of academics, Dr. P.A. Kushalappa, sir, who is a professor of dermatology and has vast experience in academics and administration. An all-rounder as golfer, cricketer, and singer, and a mentor to many in the university. Sir, I request you to welcome all. Over to you, sir. Uh, th thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Shailaja. And uh, uh, seeking the blessings of His Holiness uh, Swamiji, I uh, first of all welcome all the students to the uh, induction program of the pharmacovigilance uh, uh, program and uh, uh, to this webinar. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, the Honorable Pro Chancellor Dr. B. Suresh, the Doyen of uh, Pharmacy in India and a mentor to many of the pharmacists and also a mentor to all of us at JSS Academy of Higher Education Research. Uh, warm welcome to you, sir. And I'm sure the students are uh, all eager to listen to your pearls of wisdom. Uh, warm welcome to the Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Surinder Singh, sir. Uh, well, sir, it's been our guiding light and our leader. And uh, I'm sure, sir, with his vast experience of uh, uh, being the Drugs Controller General of India, uh, along with uh, our Pro Chancellor of the Pharmacy, uh, President of the Pharmacy Council of India, I'm sure both of them will be able to share many of their experiences to all the students over here. And, uh, uh, and, and for due to inadvertent circumstances, our registrar wasn't able to join. I uh, welcome uh, Dr. Manjunatha, registrar in absentia. And uh, I welcome Dr. Sudhindra Bhatt, who will all tell you how you can get distinction in your subjects when you take the exam. Dr. Butt will present you an overview of the examinations, a part and parcel of uh, grading you into excellent and or good uh, uh, students. I also welcome a warm welcome to uh, Dr. Pramod, the Dean of uh, Faculty of Pharmacy. Uh, welcome uh, Pramod. Uh, Dr. Ramesh, M. Ramesh, welcome to you. Dr. Dakshani, the uh, main pillar behind uh, the uh, programs, uh, the online program. Welcome to you, madam. Uh, Dr. Prashantes, welcome to you. Dr. Datta Kumar, welcome to you, uh, Datta. Uh, Dr. Harsha Chalsani, welcome to you. Uh, Shaila Jab, uh, you have already welcomed us. Welcome to you also. And uh, Mahendran, Gaurama, Purohit. Uh, Dr. Ravindra, who's always responsible for all our programs. And uh, uh, if I most importantly, I welcome all the uh, mem participants of this uh, program uh, from here and abroad. I uh, hear that the, uh, the webinar will be well attended uh, all over the world. And I extend a warm welcome to you all. Uh, good evening or good morning. And uh, whatever time it is in your time zone, a warm welcome. And uh, you will be uh, having a, a, a very good uh, webinar about uh, pharmacovigilance and how to uh, continue a drug's journey and uh, see for its success in the market after the molecule is developed and manufactured. So 
you will learn how to become be uh, vigilant in the safety of a drug so i, I again extend a warm welcome and i thank uh, uh, the organizers for having given me a chance to welcome uh, of the uh, participants and the dignitaries thank you so much thank you sir now i request our respected pro chancellor sir dr b suresh to address our learners sir has been actively involved in uplifting the standards of pharmacy education and profession in india for the past 35 years and has distinguished himself as an eminent educationist pharmacist and a leader he has been elected to the presidency of the pharmacy council of india four times and currently still holds this the role during his leadership tenure sir has actively promoted the pharmacy practice concept in india including by introducing post graduate pharmacy practice and pharmd programs sir is also a delegate member of the united states pharmacopeia convention usa and international commissioner of accreditation council of pharmacy education acpa usa he is also the executive member of the commonwealth pharmacists association and also the scientific committee on problems of the environment which is a part of the international council for science and works closely with un organizations such as unesco as elected our pro chancellor sir as the executive committee member he was also the past president of asian association of schools of pharmacy and chairman of the education section of the federation of asian pharmaceutical association he is the past president of the indian pharmaceutical association and was responsible for the drafting of pharma vision 2020 that was launched by dr apj abdul kalam the late president of india in the year 2008 by this i welcome you sir and over to you sir thank you sharaja for the introduction uh, respected uh, vice chancellor dr surinder singh uh, all my colleagues uh, from the university dear learners who have joined in uh, from india and uh, other places of the world a warm good evening or good morning to all of you across the world at the outset i would like to convey the greetings and blessings of uh, His Holiness Swami Ji, the Honorable Chancellor of our University, who has conveyed best wishes for this program. The Pharmacovigilance Diploma, which uh, has been launched, which is being launched today, is one of the several initiatives which the JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research is embarking upon. to provide continued learning environment to the students even after they graduate and work in different places they should have a opportunity to learn and advance their uh, uh, skills and knowledge so for that purpose these type of programs have been initiated this is the first in the series of such uh, uh, programs that will start and uh, there will be diploma programs certificate programs full fledged post graduate degree programs uh, which uh, the learners across the world can benefit from because this is provided through the online platform and truly brings down the concept at jss hr that is anytime anywhere learning so that is the way the education is moving forward and that is the way jss academy of higher education research is also moving forward the program on pharmacovigilance is very special to me because as the chairman of the indian pharmacopeial commission when i was the chairman of the scientific body of the indian pharmaco uh, with, uh, pharmacopeial commission the national pharmacovigilance program became a part of it prior to the uh, 2008 the pharmacovigilance program was a part of the Uh, all india institute of medical sciences and being administered from there but in 2008 this became a part of the uh, indian pharmacopeial commission and then 
the it started implementing from there the second point why pharmacovigilance program is dear to us is that among the academic institutions particularly uh, with the pharmacy and medicine involved institutions uh, jss uh, medical college and hospital and jss college of pharmacy mysore were the first to implement a pharmacovigilance program full fledged pharmacovigilance program at the hospital system and the experts actually actively supported the hospital for the drug safety issues as well as supporting both the national and the international who uh, approved upsala monitoring center with the drug safety data that emanate from the hospital side so in fact it has set precedents in many ways in india and in fact many other sites also follow the protocols methods that were developed at our site and later on we were able to they were able to translate it and move forward even now recently we had a discussion with the uh, pharmacy council of india and the indian pharmacopeial commission uh, working together and uh, we had a meeting recently about just as back as one week where the indian pharmaco uh, pharmacopeial commission national pharmacovigilance program is envisaging to expand its pharmacovigilance centers they had sought the cooperation of pharmacy council that uh, the farm d institutions which are tied up with the hospitals should also become pharmacovigilance centers that means you can imagine that uh, 30 300 more institutions barring a uh, 10 15 which are already approved with the uh, national pharmacovigilance program more than 300 institutions uh, 300 hospital systems are going to start pharmacovigilance program in the next 2 to 3 months so this brings back to the issue of having qualified manpower and trained manpower to man these pharmacovigilance centers though many of our pharmd and uh, m pharm pharmacy practice graduates who have passed out are doing wonderful work but all of them may not be excited to work in the pharmacovigilance center and uh, and they would like to have much more diverse experience but some of our graduates and post graduates who are inclined to take a career in pharmacovigilance as a pharmacovigilance associate they can definitely benefit from this program because along with the uh, particularly of our jss students if you have enrolled for a masters program and you are enrolled subsequently also for this diploma program you will benefit as coming out with uh, the pharmacovigilance diploma certificate diploma which would be valuable to you to part work in any of these pharmacovigilance centers as a pharmacovigilance associate not only that i am also very excited because uh, in the drugs and cosmetics act when it was amended uh, for including pharmacovigilance as a reporting as an important factor uh, for a longer period earlier it was existing for a shorter period but uh, when the drugs and cosmetics act uh, was amended that pharmacovigilance associate reporting from the industry that is the phase 4 trials uh, should become mandatory and should be for a longer period i was also a part of the decision making in the drug technical advisory board when this pro proposal was moved so all these things make us very important uh, make me make it very important for me for us to launch in the series of diploma programs that are to come in this uh, site uh, the pharmacovigilance being the first one to take off and uh, for those learners who are there the university is going to offer many more such programs in diploma on online which you can continue to uh, learn and equip yourself skill yourself and move forward further not only that you may even look at the present pandemic situation which is uh, uh, there and if you look at all the choices of medications or vaccines that have come in one of the primary factors that comes up for uh, two factors that come up to us first is the efficacy of the vaccine or the drug which is used for this and second is the uh, safety and the adverse reactions if any are to be monitored and provided so this is a continuously an ongoing process that is going to be of great industry a uh, great interest to both the health professionals as well as the pharmaceutical industry and the regulators so by joining this program at uh, jss hr i think uh, you have done the right decision to equip yourself for the future which is going to be 
very very important in, in ensuring the drug safety to the patient they uh, my colleagues would be briefing to you about the various aspects of our university for those who are not familiar with that uh, and they will also introduce you to the programs uh, what you are going to learn and uh, i can tell you one more thing for assure uh, assure you is that perhaps uh, ours is the only university which is uh, equipped its uh, learning management system to fill uh, to fit into the needs of the health sciences profession and bring you those type of experiences which will be very unique many online programs are available but uh, to have a platform which can take care of the health sciences uh, professionals needs is are very few across the country i mean i mean none across the country perhaps and very few across the world so i think you are one of those uh, experiences you are going to have with our platform <coughs> and i'm sure you will enjoy the experience here i welcome you to the university and wish you all the very best thank you very much thank you sir thank you for your enlightening words moving ahead i request dr prashant sir deputy director of academics to give the brief insight about jss academy of higher education and research to the learners over to you sir thank you, thank you dr shailaja i please uh, request a confirmation that uh, all of you can see the slides yes sir thank you and uh, greetings from jss academy of higher education and research mysore i believe it's an honor to talk about our university because the university started with the work dating back to around 1000 years from shri shivaratri shwara bhagavat padaru where the seed of sciences devotion and dedication started at sutturu shri kshetra this is the entrance to the shrine at sutturu shri kshetra where the bhagavat padaru is housed in the shrine and though the institution started with a religious background it was the 23rd pontiff jagadguru shri shivaratri rajendra mahaswami ji who laid the foundations of education and further it was carried by his holiness jagadguru shri shivaratri deshikendra mahaswami ji the chancellor of jss academy of higher education research with a dream in the heart a gleam in the eye and a vision in the mind to make this world a better place to live for everyone through education there was born jss mahavidya peeta and this jss mahavidya peeta is the sponsoring society for jss academy of higher education and research jss mahavidya peeta has got around 350 plus institutions and the legacy goes for enlightening young minds through education not only in health sciences and education but also science and technology and service to society through these 350 plus institution starting from a crash till post doctoral studies and it was in 2008 that jss university was born and evolved as jss academy of higher education research in the year 2018 to the leadership of dr c g betsurmat executive secretary jss mahavidya peeta who has been a senior super time scale karnataka administrative officer and the leadership and vision of our pro chancellor dr b suresh sir who is actively involved in uplifting the standards of pharmacy education and profession in india and abroad also who has pioneered the cause of promoting pharmacy practice concept in india and for the fourth consecutive time is the president of pharmacy council of india along with our vice chancellor dr surinder singh who has been the former drugs controller general of india and former director of national institution institute of biologicals with the ardent efforts and leadership from our registrar dr b manjunatha who has strived down the ladder as a leader to guide us through the process and a humble beginning with all the leadership efforts in 2008 started from jss medical college jss dental college and hospital jss college of pharmacy all three institutions in mysore and jss college of pharmacy at ot the progress was steady with faculty of biomedical sciences in 2009 expanding to faculty of management studies in 2010 faculty of life sciences in the same year and progressing to faculty of natural sciences in 2019 and faculty of yoga in 2020 we also have state of the art equipped 1800 bedded 
multi speciality and super speciality hospital to take translation work into practice to benefit mankind also this is one of the star attractions at jss academy of higher education research where during the pandemic when education becomes little difficult and virtual education becomes the next generation academics we have equipped ourselves with the virtual reality augmented reality and robotics assisted simulation lab assisting all the faculty as well as students to take the teaching and learning to greater heights so with a vision to provide education that helps transformation of individuals and society and a mission of providing superior undergraduate graduate and professional education to our students by developing and advancing their talents to create applicable knowledge and nurturing translational and transformational research to benefit the society we are inspiring to excel in health sciences delivery and care and for our ardent efforts in the year 2019 the national assessment and accreditation council has accredited us with a plus grade and progressing further we went international in the year 2019 times higher education world university ranking has rated us one of the top 500 universities in the world and third in india and with the subject ranking of our thrust area of health clinical preclinical and health we have been uh, topping at the top 300 in the world and first in india further the times higher education world university impact ranking has for our efforts with you know uh, uh, sustained development goals of the un among the 766 universities has rated in the top 300 with top second rank in the year 2021 for sdg3 that is health and the national institutional ranking framework we are the top 50 in the consecutive fifth year in this year the 33rd position in india with medical and dental colleges in the top 20 and both the pharmacy colleges in the top 10 in india the accreditation council for pharmacy education has given us the certificate for uh, the farm d program the international certification where we are the first among the universities in the asia pacific region to get this recognition and reaccreditation in the year 2020 and for our efforts to take teaching and learning to the next level and our preparedness in e learning and excellence we have been given the five star rating by cockerley simons i gage indian university rating and a diamond rating from the same institution so the qs world university ranking by subject in the year 2021 for the pharmacy and pharmacology subject gives us among 1453 institutions we are in the top 5 in india and going strong with the center of online education we have embraced anytime anywhere learning through the capabilities of excellence in e education as well as prowess in the field of pharmacy i welcome you all jss academy of higher education research where we dream about empowering you so that we can change the world one step at a time thank you sir thank you for briefing our learners about our esteemed university now i request our chief guest for today's program our respectful vice chancellor sir dr surinder singh to address our learners sir has held various important positions in the various prestigious institutes he was work, previously working as drugs controller general india central drug standard control organization he has also worked for, as director national institute of biologicals he has also worked as director regional drugs testing laboratory chandigarh he has also worked as additional director central drugs lab central research institute kasoli and also as assistant director of microbiology in the central drugs lab central research institute kasoli and as assistant professor in government sardar patel medical college bikaner it is a privilege to have such a great leader administrator and educator who constantly guided us in starting these online programs over to you sir thank you dr chaleja uh, good morning good afternoon good evening to all of you depending upon uh, the time zone in which we are as i understand we got also students have uh, logged in from us also 
So at the outset, I submit my respectful pranams to the lotus feet of His Holiness Jagat Guru Shri Shivratri Deshi Kendra Mahaswami Ji, the Honorable Chancellor of GSS Academy of Higher Education Research and the President of GSS Mahavidya Peet and Honorable Chancellor of GSS Academy of Higher Education Research. I also extend my very warm greetings uh, to Dr. B. Suresh, our Pro-Chancellor, who is the guiding force behind this university and he has brought the university to the level where now it is not only recognized nationally, but also is making its presence felt globally and embarking on a journey of global footprints. I also extend my very warm greetings to Dr. B. B. Manjunatha Rajista, who, uh, because of some uh, preoccupation, cannot join us today, uh, but my greetings to him. My greetings to Dr. P. Shalapa, Director of Academics, Dr. Sudendra Bhatt, Controller of Examinations, Dr. Dakshani, Director of Online uh, Education, Dr. Prashant as Deputy Director of Academics, Dr. PM Pramod, uh, uh, who is uh, Dean and Faculty of Pharmacy and also Principal of JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysuru, Dr. M. Ramesh, Head of Department of Pharmacy Practice, JSS College of Pharmacy, Dr. Shri Harsha, Program Coordinator, Department of Pharmacy Practice, uh, Dr. Datta Kumar, Head of uh, Operations and Learning Management System of JSSHR and uh, Mr. Mahendran B, who is the coordinator. And a uh, very warm welcome to all the learners who have joined online for today's program and have enrolled for this pharmacovigilance program. Now, dear learners and students, uh, I think you have already been uh, apprised about our JSS Academy of Education Search and also uh, been given an insight into the pharmacovigilance uh, uh, activities and the form of the business program by our uh, Honorable Pro Chancellor. I will touch upon three, four important issues with you. That is one, that is uh, the number one is the as a learner or as a student, what type of a spirit you should have if you want to face the challenges in life. Number one. Number two is why you have like enrolled for this university. Uh, Dr. Prashant S has given his pers uh, perspective, I'll give you my perspective behind it. Then why pharmacovigilance program? And what this program, if I complete my diploma, what it does for me, what the future holds for me, if I have this the diploma in my hand, what are the opportunities and the, uh, the gates which open up for me as far as the placement and the employment is concerned. So these are the few of the questions which always be in your mind. Now, first come into the spirit. And I'm talking of a spirit of a 47 years person. And you all are about uh, at this age, about uh, you must be in your early 20s. And what I talk of 47 is that I was of that age of Drug Controller General of India in 2008. And 2009, we had a WHO meeting happening at AIMS. They were in the AIMS conference room. And there we, this meeting, was happening on pharmacovigilance itself. And there, one of the WHO's representative, he said that you see such a big country like India, it doesn't have a national pharmacovigilance program of its own. And that was, I think, as a drug controller general of India, I was a chairperson, I was listening to it, the talk which was happening. And even smaller countries in Southeast Asia, they have got this pharmacovigilance program. And at that point of our time, we did not have national pharmacovigilance program in our country. Why? We did we have never have it? We had one program starting in 2003 and it ended in June 2008. It was also called as a national pharmacovigilance program. And this was a World Bank assisted capacity building project, which was there with the Ministry of Health. It's, it was launched with a lot of fanfare by the, the then, then health minister. But it uh, stopped in 2008, June. Why? Because the funding ended. The World Bank capacity building project came to an end. And this program was basically fizzled out. But to tell you the spirit, in that meeting, in that forum, I said in front of everyone, and I addressed that person, I don't want to name his name, he became a big man in WHO later on. And I told him in front of everyone, that you mark my word, that we in India will have the biggest program in the world and we are going to embark on it. And after that meeting, I went to Joint Secretary. Sir, we don't want to hear uh, that we are the largest pharmacy in the world. 
we don't want to hear this thing that we don't have a national pharmacovigilance program. And he was also like, I think that thing went into his mind. He said, go and plan what you want. So then we put a team in place when he started planning in 2009. And the pharmacovigilance program, as you know, as of today, it was launched on 10th of July, 2010. And it was launched in 90 medical colleges across the country at that time. Because what we thought is, let us start from the medical college. Because, because at that time, the clinicians, they never wanted to report. They always felt that their uh, patients is their uh, priority. So they would prefer to rather give them uh, prescribed medicines and uh, take care of them rather than report adverse effects happening because of the drugs. So why we launched into the medical college and especially the pharmacology department was with the idea that today's student is tomorrow's practitioner. That the students, when they are passing through the pharmacology department, they should be sensitized that why this pharmacovigilance is important so that once they pass out 10 years down the line or 15 years down the line, we will have a large pool of practitioners in the country who would be reporting adverse events and they would be knowing what is it's important, what it results in. So this was one thing which we uh, initiated at that point of our time. And why these programs they never took up is, it's not that there were no programs, there were programs. ICMR used to start a program, then it would end somewhere after a couple of years. Then Ames would start its program, it will end after some time. But there was never a national program. And the one which started in 2003, 2008, why it fizzled out was, there was one basic flaw in it, that was, there was never a dedicated budget for this program. So the first and the foremost thing which we did when we launched this National Pharmacovigilance Program is to create a dedicated budgetary head and Ministry of Health program which is, which is existing in it, there's a pink book in which the budget comes and there's a dedicated head under which now there's pharmacovigilance under which the money comes. And the first grant which came for that was 50 lakh rupees in 2010. That is 5 million Indian rupees. And let me tell you what happens. We started in somewhere in 2010 and in 2012, we put up a proposal to the ministry. I was no longer drug control general of India, but I wrote that proposal for the the person who took over from me as a drug controller general of India, Dr. G.N. Singh. And for 12th five-year plan, we put 100 crores. That means I am, if I'm not wrong, this is 1,000 million rupees proposal we put and it was approved. So that's a like, so that's a, what I want to tell the students is you should have the nation, the, whichever country you belong, the spirit of that nation highest in your mind. And anything which goes against your national spirit, I think you should take up the cudgels and try to see to it that you put an end to it. So this is how this pharmacovigilance program, the way you see it today, it came up. And now it is one of the largest program in the world, let me tell you. This program initially, as our pro-chancellor said, was earlier we put it in uh, all India Institute of Medical Sciences, but because of some technical reasons, we had to shift it to uh, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission, that also I can share you with you why it is because in the ministry, we have got different divisions, joint secretaries. So this aims who comes under different joint secretary and a different division which looks after medical education. Whereas Drug Controller General of India, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission, National Institute of Biologicals, they come under drug division. So it was taken out from there and put it under Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission in 2011. April 2011, this is functioning in uh, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. And at present under this center, we have got 350 reporting centers all over the country. And in 130 centers, the money comes from this center. So it is these centers also, which can be your future employment places where you can look for the jobs. And there are quite a large number of these centers which are going to be set up over the period to come over there. And another thing which I want to share is, as I said, we are the largest contributor of the adverse event data in the Uppsala Monitoring Center, which is a WHO collaborating center at the global level in Sweden. And till date, we have almost, uh, 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 in that adverse event data, we have almost given almost uh, uh, 5 lakh, that is 0 0.5 million ADRs we have already reported into it. And based on these ADRs, we take our own decisions. Because another thing which we told our ministry at that time was, why we should be taking regulatory decisions based on the adverse event data which is generated outside our country. How our population is going to behave to these drugs and because of our ethnic diversity and variation which is going to be across the length of the breadth of the country, 
why we should not have a data from within our country. So that's, that's what another one reason what we thought is that we should have our own data and we should take our own call on it. And let me tell you, based on this pharmacovigilance program, which we have said, we have got now over the last one decade, 120 recommendations of drug alert and recommendations going to DCJ, Drug Control General of India for package inserts. And based on like some of the examples I can give you, like uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome, in, uh, like it is one of the adverse reactions which has been reported under this program for carbamazepine. Then skin reactions have been reported for clobazamab, and they have been like given us some sort of a drug alert in this, and for multifacin, the eye disorders. So these are some of the examples which I wanted to share with you. And uh, another thing which I want to share with you under this pharmacovigilance program is within our country is that there, has, there is a notification issued by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India that each and every pharma company in the country, and there are more than 5,000 pharma companies in our country, each and every pharma company has to have a pharmacovigilance cell. And this pharmacovigilance cell has to have well-qualified and skilled pharmacovigilance officer who will directly report to CDSU. He is not supposed to report to even the manufacturer. He can share the data with the manufacturer, but whatever adverse reaction data is to come, he is, this pharmacovigilance officer is under the control of, of the Drug Control General of India. So there are 5,000 companies, and just see how many pharmacovigilance cells would be there and how many job opportunities are there. Then another thing which has happened is because these companies now are required to basically collect the data with regard to the adverse events which are happening, the larger companies, they are making a use of large scale use of digital technologies and artificial intelligence. Because huge data, these companies are very big companies, especially multinational companies. They've got a global database of uh, patient generated data which is coming to them. And uh, they are using these uh, digital technologies, basic machine learning uh, uh, models and artificial intelligence to analyze adverse reactions. So those of you who become technology savvy and they have got this diploma also with it, they can very well get into these companies also where the digital technology and AI is being extensively used. And these are the ones which are the scenarios for the future to come over there. And uh, with these thoughts, I think that uh, the diploma in which you are basically enrolling, it opens a huge opportunities, whether it is pharmacovigilance centers which are going to be opened across the length and breadth of the country, Number two is with regard to the pharma, pharmaceutical units which are there in the country, which now are on a basically on a, this pharmacovigilance cells, they are being expanded in this because as our capacity and our global supplies are increasing, we are having more and more manpower into these pharmacovigilance cells. So these opportunities are available for you and these are the ones waiting for you to be tapped by if you then uh, if you go through this diploma in success uh, successfully and those uh, of you who are from outside our country the different parts of the world i think you can look for the opportunities of making use of this diploma of in pharmacovigilance covered with the your knowledge of digital technologies and ai for looking the opportunities at the global levels so with these words i welcome all of you to this diploma in pharmacovigilance program which I am very sure under leadership of our Dr. Dakshani and Director of Academics, Dr. Kushalappa, it will offer you to deep insights into the general principles and the regulatory perspectives in pharmacovigilance because I can assure you that we have got the best of the faculty who are doing exceedingly uh, excellent job, not only in uh, this pharmacovigilance, but other areas also. That's why we have got our pharma, pharmacy colleges ranking number at nine and 10 in the NRF over there and most soft of the pharmacy colleges. So you should feel very happy that you have enrolled for this program. And each one of you, why I talk, talk to you about the spirit right in the beginning, because each one of you, 57 of you who have enrolled for this program, I see a leader in each one of you. The future leader, whether you are within the country or you are at the global level, and I am sure that you will continue to scale greater heights by always upskilling yourself, acquiring new knowledge, always learning, uh, relearning, and trying to give best to your society wherever you are. So with these words, I wish you all good luck and extend you once again a very, very warm welcome to Diploma in Pharmacovigilance Program. 
at GSS Academy of Higher Education Research, which is one of the most reputed and respected university and academy in our uh, research academy in our country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your motivating words. Moving ahead, I request our Director of Center for Distance and Online Education, Dr. Dakshaini M.R. Ma'am, to introduce the learners about the online programs offered by JSS HR. Ma'am is a prosthodontist by profession with 30 years of rich teaching experience. She is an able administrator, constant mentor, motivator, and guiding force in the development of these online programs at JSS HR. Over to you, Ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Shailaja. With pronouns to His Holiness and with respects to all the panelists and the learners, I will be talking a little about what these online programs are in general at JSS AHER. So, as you are all aware, the online programs have in a lot of importance during these pandemics as a major uh, way of learning. However, these have many other advantages, including anytime, anyway learning. And we can take the advantage of this even when we are pursuing other activities like being a student or being able to work as well as increase our knowledge as a lifelong learner. These online programs are usually student-centric and they are very engaging. They can be self-directed completely or it can be instructor-led. This program of Diploma in Pharmacovigilance is instructor-led. However, it is to some extent independent also. And you can do this anywhere, anytime. Now, if we see what is the difference between these two modes of learning, that is a regular mode and the online mode, it is not very different. It is just that it, the mode of learning is slightly different. How the, even the UGC regulation gives us the equivalence to say that even the programs that you do regularly is equivalent to an online mode learning programs. So in a classroom, you can see that you have your peers in the classroom, you interact with them, and you have the teacher there who you interact with also. The slight difference in online mode is that you are learning at your own pace, including your reading materials, and you are going to be doing your assignments on your own. There are discussion forums which is going to help you to get connected with your peers. And there are also live interactions with which you can utilize to interact with your peers as well as the instructors. Along with that, you have the opportunity of hearing to the experts in the field that you are studying through the webinars, which is going to reach out to more number of people. Also, these webinars are going to be certified uh, experts uh, talks that you're going to hear. And if you happen not to be able to log into these programs, you can also have the recorded uh, versions of these webinars along with your projects work and exam preparation is going to help you to understand the program that you have got enrolled in. As I said, these are all student centric, yes. At the same time, we have to understand that you are not doing this exclusively, meaning to say you either have your studies or your work to be done. So you, it is necessary that you plan according to your schedules because these programs are time bound. As I will tell later, the regulation specifies a certain time period with which you have to complete these programs. So planning on your uh, side is very important. Now, just a few words which is going to be popping up in, any of, in all these uh, programs is synchronous and asynchronous learning. Now, what is this synchronous and asynchronous learning is that synchronous is at the same time. What is happening now is synchronous.
So there's going to be live communication. However, this is less flexible because it is a pre-scheduled time slot. This would be a synchronous way of learning. Whereas you have the other components which are asynchronous where you can communicate, the communication is less, but you have the freedom and the flexibility because you can learn at your own pace, at your own speed. And you can do it many number of times also, even beyond your planned schedules. Now, all these programs which we are offering at JSS EHR is as per the requirements of UGC. And there is a regulation which came out in 2020, which is going to be the main basis on which these programs are regulated. According to that also, it is necessary that we monitor the progress of your program and also record your attendance. Attendance is going to be the amount of videos that you are going to be uh, attending to and the assignments that you have to complete. A few other things that is required by the regulations and which is followed in this program also, which is going to help us and give us that credential of these programs being recognized by the UGC are that they have the learning outcomes specified. You have a good enriched and interactive sessions that are extended. You have good amount of activities in them. And there are assessments which are going to help you to learn well. Also, as I said earlier, it is double the duration of the minimum required time to complete a course that you will get to finish this course. That means if this is a one-year program, you'll have two years to complete the program. And all these programs are delivered to you in four quadrant uh, uh, way. And to introduce you what this four quadrant is, quadrant one would include all the live sessions and the tutorials that you are going to see Quadrant two would include all the reading materials. Quadrant three would be your discussion forums and quadrant four would be your assessments. And all these are designed in a specific way. The program would be designed to have a number of courses and each course will have many units and each unit will have different modules. And these videos, of quadrant one will be of short duration in order to engage the student adequately because we also understand that the learning span of a student would be short. It is not possible to go on viewing the videos continuously for more than 20 minutes. So these things are all kept in mind when these videos have been done and it is available to you on the learning management system. You can see here, this is just an example to give you a sneak peek into the program is you have a talking head is your instructor talking to you as well as the material that he is talking about available to you to read along with that, which keeps you engaged when you are learning these programs. Along with that, the other activities that you have to be, you will be doing is the assignments and the assessments. The assessments will have both formative assessment as well as the summative assessments for you to. Come to the synchronous learning, you have the discussion forums, which is available to you to start a discussion of relevance or doubts that you can put it into the discussion forum where the peers like a chat, a normal chat on the internet, you can start answering and you will be connected to your peers. Along with that, as I said, webinars will be available and pre-recorded webinars is also available for you. The other features would be your notifications and announcement in the LMS. As you go along your, using your LMS, you'll get to know all these special features. Also, when you are studying, there is a chance that you get a doubt, which gives you the, this LMS gives you that opportunity of posting your question whenever you are studying, seeing the videos, and that will be answered by the program coordinators. Also, as I said, there's going to be progress of the learning documented. So you will see that after a certain time, periodically it is going to be documented and submitted to the examination section and the relevant bodies to see your progress. So if it is 25, 50 or 75, it is going to be recorded. This progress is also available for you to keep a track of yourself.
because self motivation is very important in these programs so being self motivated gives you that sense of completion of these programs coming to the examination component of it examination would be usually a computer based one it can be at home examination where you are monitored with ai they are called as proctoring ai enabled proctoring or it can be a center based examination learner support services are quite good for these programs you are on one on one as you have already seen that you will be chat there is going to be a chat you can put in your uh, queries other than the academic one academic queries you're going to put on the lms any other queries the mentors are there to mentor you guide you advise you along with that we have the technical assistance for which you also have a mail id and the technical assistance of either it could be the use of lms or it could be examination our technical team is very efficient and they are going to be helping you out throughout the course that you are going to be doing in this university so with this i welcome you to as a jss family and thank you for hearing me thank you for briefing our learners about the online programs ma'am now i would request our controller of examinations dr sudindra bhat sir to address our learners about the examinations Sir is a professor of pharmacy and has been the guiding force in the smooth conduct of the exams. Over to you, sir. Uh, Oh, my screen is visible, madam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. Seeking the blessings of uh, His Holiness uh, Swami Ji, uh, respected dignitaries, uh, my dear uh, student friends, uh, namaste to all of you. I happily welcome our new learners to JSS family. As you are aware. the education comprises of uh, two things one is the academics the other one is the examination academics uh, facilitate your learning skill development and acquisition of knowledge while the examination measures to what extent you have acquired the knowledge skills and abilities hence examination is an important component of your learning process and it always facilitate a targeted continuous improvement of your studies you know examinations are very important many times we feel uh, we get a fear of examination no not to be it is a very important component it instills discipline it gives you an ability to stay focused under pressure it gives you the qualification that you require in your life it teaches you the time management which is very important and ultimately it improves your learning methodology let me speak to you about the examination system for the online education program which you have enrolled i'll be highlighting on two things one is on the program the other one is on the examination regulations this is pg diploma program pharmacovigilance this is one year duration that means there are two semesters in first semester you will be learning the subject principles of pharmacovigilance and in the second semester you will be studying regulatory perspective of pharmacovigilance the medium of instruction and evaluation is english the maximum duration by which you should complete this course is double the duration that is two years if you don't clear this within two years you will have to re-register for this particular program now coming to the examination system we have two types of assessments here one is called as the formative assessment the other one is the summative assessment formative assessment is a continuous assessment that happens throughout your course of study and summative assessment happens at the end of the term that is end of the semester in formative assessment there are different components which are measured one is the 20% weightage for this formative assessment goes for completeness of learning module 
so you need to attend and be uh, present in all these learning module actively in order to get marks for this formative assessment that is completeness of uh, learning module second one about 15% is for assignment and case studies which are given during the course of your study 10% for the unit tests that are conducted 5% for the discussion forum you will also have a comprehensive test in each of these semesters in the formative assessment that carries about 50% of marks this is the weightage that is given for the formative assessment at the end there will be a summative assessment that will be conducted by the university which is a proctored online examination one important thing you need to know here is that the examination will be mcq based it will be proctored mode and this proctoring can be proctoring meaning is you are invigilated you have been watched when you are uh, when you are taking the examination this can be by artificial intelligence means uh, that we will be doing as made mention that it can be at home or it can be at the center depending on the situation at that particular time now what is the marks distribution for formative assessment 50 marks will be there in each paper i am talking and in summative assessment it is for 50 marks so summative examination that is end term examination shall be based on mcqs multiple choice questions there will be 50 questions and you will have you will get the time for this to answer and they are conducted by proctored online mode what is the criteria for pass the student shall be declared to have passed the examination and eligible to get the grade card if he secures at least 50% of the marks which is a sum of both the formative assessment and summative assessment declaration of the class based on your final marks which you secure we give the class for the semester and also for the year at the end of your course first class with distinction if you secure 75% that in single attempt and first class if you score between 60 to 75 and second class if you get between 50 to 60 less than 50 definitely the student have failed in the examination wish you all the very best and i thank the authorities and the coordinator for providing the opportunity for attending this program it was a pleasure speaking to all of you thank you so much thank you sir thank you for briefing the learners about the examinations moving ahead i request our dean faculty of pharmacy dr t m pramod kumar sir who is also the principal of pharmacy college mysuru sir is presently working as dean faculty of pharmacy jsshr and principal and professor in the department of pharmaceutics with over 24 years of teaching and research experience sir is striving towards excellence and setting benchmark in the pharmacy education in the country over to you sir thank you uh, dr shalaja now uh, seeking the blessings of his holiness uh, uh, swami ji uh, uh, it is very heartening to know that uh, we are in this induction program of uh, pharmaco vigilance uh, diploma program that is being offered online and uh, i feel very proud that uh, uh, pharmacy colleges mysore and uh, ooty which are ranked as uh, top 10 pharmacy colleges in the country among 2 uh, and 1/2000 uh, pharmacy colleges uh, it is very nice to know about all these uh, uh, new achievements that we are uh, heading to and if you look at the different pharmacy programs that we offer at uh, mysore and ooty we have 10 different uh, programs that we offer here right from uh, diploma in pharmacy that uh, program of 4 uh, years b pharm practice of 2 years m pharm and 10 different specializations at both mysore and ooty campus then we do have a residency program of uh, in uh, nephrology and oncology again the first of its kind in india we offer pharmd program doctor of pharmacy and uh, uh, pharmd post baccalaureate and we also have a phd program as well in both the colleges if you just look at the uh, teaching faculty we have more than uh, 50 faculty in uh, mysore and uh, uh, 50 faculty in ooty we have uh, more than 200 research scholars working for uh, uh, different uh, areas and uh, we have attracted uh, 
say crores of uh, uh, rupees in terms of uh, grants for uh, carrying out our uh, uh, research activities. And uh, we have uh, definite uh, thrust areas as well. And all these different credentials, we have been rated and uh, ranked as uh, by Career 360 as a third uh, in uh, all over in all over India. And as uh, our uh, uh, other uh, uh, university leadership was making a mention that uh, this is one of its uh, kind that we are opening up. It's a big Pandora's box where we are opening up number of other PG diploma programs in a, uh, in a few uh, months to go here. And this is basically to see how value addition can be done for the students who graduate from uh, the pharmacy colleges. Say any student who comes out from pharmacy college, Mysore or Ruti, should have an advantage of having an additional qualification for them. So with that intention and also to cater to the requirement of the society, we had uh, uh, started these programs. And uh, Dr. B. Suresh, who is a pro chancellor and the president of Pharmacy Council of India, always tells in many different platforms that the pharmacy colleges, Mysore and Uti, are the laboratories for pharmacy education and research. Normally, whatever the new idea that uh, we develop upon, it has been experimented, experienced here, and then we open it up to the. So uh, we would we were uh, very fortunate to work under uh, such wonderful leadership, where uh, as a pharmacy profession we have our pro chancellor who is a pharmacist. We have a controller who is again a pharmacist. So we have a number of pharmacists spread in the university who are in the leadership position and are able to guide us and mentor us through. And this program is very well supported by our 1,800 bed super specialty hospital and the very able leadership at both Mysore as well as Uti. And the students, are very well benefited with the uh, different type of uh, clinical trials that are being conducted. And to name a few, one of the uh, vaccine trial of Covishield vaccine trial, our uh, uh, pharmacy graduates, our uh, faculty and students were a part of the trial. And even I was a volunteer uh, who took uh, both the doses of the vaccine as a part of a clinical trial. So you all would be very excited to be a part of this uh, pharmacy colleges and its uh, programs. And uh, certainly we, have, we always uh, uh, feel that we are the pioneers in this particular uh, uh, say the initiative. And the only slogan that we follow at JSS is, we normally do not follow anyone. We always want to be the leaders in whatever the activity that we do. So that is a drive what we have. And that is a leadership uh, is, uh, the expectation and uh, anytime, anywhere, the learning is not going to stop. We would uh, certainly be uh, uh, mentoring all the students who will be joining us here and also the industrial professionals would be also taking the benefit of this uh, program. And we have a number of other initiatives that we have uh, 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 taking up, be it within India, be it outside India. Uh, lot of new initiatives are in the pipeline. I once again congratulate all those who have taken up this uh, pharmacovigilance diploma program. We had this uh, program earlier uh, which was presented offline and right now it is online and it is more exciting and uh, you can even have a number of times the repetitions and also more accessible information during the the COVID pandemic, even during the lockdown also, there are a lot of activities. I once again thank the leadership and the opportunity given for us to be a part of this induction program. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you, sir. Now I call upon Dr. M. Ramesh, sir, who is presently working as professor and head of the Department of Pharmacy Practice. Sir is, a, sir is also heading the Clinical Pharmacy Department at Jason's Hospital. Mysuru. Sir has a rich 25 years of uh, teaching and research experience. He has several awards to his credit. Now, I request uh, Dr. Ram Ramesh, sir, 
to give an overview of the pharmacovigilance program to the learners. Over to you, sir. Is my screen visible, Dr. Shailaja? Yes, sir, it's visible. Thank you, Dr. Shailaja. Good evening to one and all. At the outset, I take this opportunity to thank our beloved Vice Chancellor, Dr. B. Suresha, and Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Surinder Singh Sar, and all the authorities of JSSHR for giving me an opportunity to be part of this induction program and to present an overview of online program of Diploma in Pharmacovigilance offered at JSSHR Mysore. Indeed, it was under their leadership and guidance, few online education programs were commenced and several other programs are to commence. And one such program is Diploma in Pharmacovigilance. Is my screen moving, Shailaja? No, sir, it's not moving. So you can stop sharing and then reshare. Oh. I'll get my laptop. You present it. Sorry for that interruption. Diploma in Pharmacovigilance offered at JSSHR is a comprehensive course offering candidate with a fundamental knowledge in pharmacovigilance and import the essence of core pharmacovigilance. This program aims to impart the knowledge regarding best practices and regulatory aspects in pharmacovigilance to enable the learners to translate the essence of pharmacovigilance for the benefit of public health. The program is of one year duration and is designed to cover drug safety aspects and their monitoring in accordance with national and international legislation and guidelines, as well as proactive strategies for risk management to improve patient safety. The curriculum was designed in consultation with academicians and industry experts, considering the need and expectations of various stakeholders in order to meet the requirements of the learners from different relevant fields. The program encompasses key lecture, e-content, that is a self-study materials, discussion forum, where you can get your doubts clarified in a near real-time basis and assessment. The program consists of two papers, namely principles of pharmacovigilance, that is a paper one, and regulatory perspectives of pharmacovigilance, that is a paper two. The curricular design of each paper is divided into five units and each unit comprises of several modules encompassing 10 to 12 hours of learning materials per module. For this program, JSSHR adopts modern ICT enabled approach as a mode of instruction. Though most of the instructions are imported through online mode, our instructional design is learner oriented wherein a learner is an active participant in the teaching learning process. The teaching and learning methods incorporate online contact classes and virtual hands on training for practical orientation. Further, independent project assignments exercise provide opportunities for learners to apply theoretical knowledge to real time problems and enable them to develop skills in problem analysis and the resolution. For the curricular delivery, qualified and well-experienced faculties from JSSHR and its adjunct faculties and experts from industry are being involved so as to enable the learners to have a great learning experience with us. The program consists of 40 credit points and one credit will be awarded for 30 hours of learning, including participation in discussion forum, working on assignments and other activities designated for the course. And for the successful completion of diploma program, 
the learner is expected to attain a total of 40 credits. Upon completion, this program enables the learners not only to apply the basic principles of pharmacovigilance, but also demonstrate the good pharmacovigilance practice. Also, it enables the learners to recognize the issues surrounding the risk and benefit of drug use in human, and also to distinguish the regulatory requirements of safety reporting in both pre and post marketing surveillance. Overall, it enables learners to develop a commit commitment to lifelong learning and contribute to the patient safety. Coming to the carry revenues, as we all know, drug safety has become of utmost importance than before, not just nationally, but globally. And thus, the job opportunities in the area of drug safety have increased multifold across the globe. This program caters to evolving industry demands and molds both fresher and as well as the experienced candidates to become exceptional professionals in the arena of pharmacovigilance. This program may enable learners to secure positions or senior positions at various relevant fields, especially in pharmaceutical organizations as a pharmacovigilance associate, a clinical auditor, business development manager, pharmacovigilance data manager, drug safety associate, and medical writer, et cetera. With more than two decades of our experience and expertise in the field of pharmacovigilance, we at JSSHR have given a careful thought in designing both curriculum and its delivery to make the learning of diploma in pharmacovigilance as a lifetime experience for the learners. Hope you all will have a joyful, enhanced, and great learning experience at JSSHR Mysuru. Thank you for choosing JSSHR, and we wish you all all the very best. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Next, I request Dr. Datta Kumar, sir, operations head of the learning management system, who is the key person involved in the development and delivering of uh, learning management system. I request, sir, to explain about the same to the learners. Over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, respected leadership at uh, JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research. And uh, good evening to all the learners. It's a pleasure to support uh, from the technology perspective, the learning management system, and also uh, take the continued support for all the learners. In fact, uh, it's been a great experience working with uh, the subject matter experts, working with the learners uh, to ensure that uh, um, the technology platform is kind of uh, glitch free because it, it becomes very important that when we deal with technology, uh, it, it, it's like we're not dealing with our own minds. We are, we are dealing with the technology. So all the time there would be some issue or the other. So uh, from on behalf of uh, the JSS AHR uh, technology team, uh, we would like to, uh, um, we would like to inform you that we will be able to provide full support to all the learners. And uh, uh, there is a common mail uh, to which your uh, observations, your uh, needs on technology can be shared with. Uh, that will be given at the end of this course. But uh, what I also feel is uh, I have my colleague with me, uh, Sumana, who would also in a very quick format take us through the learning management portal so that uh, there is one round of familiarity that gets built in before you would be shared with the username and the password uh, so that uh, the login credentials are available with you to start with the program and start the learning process. So uh, on behalf of uh, the JSS AHR, uh, I, I would like to thank, the, um, thank all the learners for joining this program and we wish from the technology perspective uh, a great learning to come and uh, we are there to support you anytime, anywhere. And that's the slogan that we take through. So my colleague is there and she has also joined on the same thing. Uh, Sumana, you could probably share your screen and then uh, take the learners through quickly on uh, uh, what is in store for them and how the learning can happen. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. So uh, I'll be uh, taking uh, everyone through the portal. So just to inform, uh, once you get your login uh, credentials, uh, what are the procedures you need to follow? So basically this would be the, uh, 
this is ahr.ananza.com. This is the URL which you will be using to log into the portal. So uh, you will be landing in this page. So uh, you have uh, uh, about the program, about uh, the GSS HR online learning, the programs list uh, and the contact us, everything. Once you click on the login, you will be uh, redirected to the login pop-up. If you have your username and password with you, uh, you can directly uh, provide the username and password and click on login. If you do not have your password or you, uh, by chance if you have uh, forgotten your password, you can just click on forgot password and enter the email. So once you enter this email, it will redirect you to the uh, password reset page you will be uh, seeing a verification code. Uh, you will be receiving a verification code in your email. You have to put that verification code and the new password and the confirm password. Once this has been filled, your password gets reset and you will be able to log into the portal. And once you log into the portal, you will be uh, taken to the dashboard page. So this would be the dashboard page wherein it contains all the details of your program, the announcements, if anything is there, and the event uh, details, anything is there, all these stuffs. The, if you do not see your program here, the first thing you have to do is click on my applications. You will be seeing your application here for whatever program you have uh, applied. Uh, here it is uh, pharmacovigilance. So once it is uh, uh, seen, you, can, you need to click on open. You will see all the details of the program, the in, who are the instructors, the curriculum, the FAQs, everything. You also see a start button here on click of which you are, uh, if you already made, uh, your uh, actual pro course will go, is going to start. It will commence it here in the dashboard. Until and unless you don't start the uh, course or the program from the My Applications tab, you will not be seeing the uh, program or the courses here. So uh, as this is uh, pharmaco PC diploma and pharmacovigilance, I click on this. You can see the semester one courses. So I click on any one of the course that will take you to the course details page, wherein this core deta details page have all these tabs. Uh, the course structure shows the content, whatever the content is there. And uh, uh, once you click on start button, this will navigate you to the first content of the course. This is introductory video. Introductory video gets opened up for you and you can see the uh, particular video. You can watch it till end. Thank and you. once Thank you, you uh, watch it completely, you can see a mark complete button in the down you have to click on mark complete button to move to the next content. Until and unless you uh, click on mark complete, the uh, you will not be able to access next content. You can uh, see here, you have uh, clicked on mark complete, this says as a tick mark, means you have already viewed this content. And here it is not tick mark, so it means that you are still viewing this content. Here you have not attempted to view this because you have not clicked on mark complete. Once you click on mark complete, you will be able to, able to see your next content. So uh, this is the uh, course structure. You will be uh, having uh, mini assignments in the middle, videos, uh, uh, sliders or the uh, PowerPoint presentations in the middle. And at the end of uh, each unit, there will be a formatic quiz you will be having additional reading links uh, which will be uploaded by the instructors. And at the end of uh, each course, you'll be having a mock summative quiz. So once all these thing, uh, things are completed, you will be completing uh, one single course. Meantime, you have a discussion forum wherein uh, you can post your question regarding any, if you have any doubts, you can post the question here that will be uh, visible uh, to all the uh, fellow learners as well as the instructors, any one of them can uh, re reply you back or uh, clarify your doubt. And the next thing is the assignment tab, wherein if any assignment has been uh, given by the instructors, that will come and sit here. 
and assessment tab, the first assessment, second assessment, whatever is that is going to take place, everything will come and sit in the assessment tab. The respective date, uh, the time of the assessment, all the details will be in this tab. And the recorded session, the Zoom sessions that happens on the uh, li happens live will be recorded and it will be uh, saved in this particular uh, recorded session tab so that you can view that uh, uh, Zoom session uh, later sometime if you have not attended that. And any reference textbooks are there that will come and sit here in the reference textbook tab. Any event that has been created uh, that will come and sit in your calendar and once you click on that, you will be able to see what is the event uh, that is going to happen today. So all these things uh, uh, are the ones which you need to keep in mind. You have a quick tour button available. This will take you through the portal. What all uh, the steps I have told you just now, all these things are uh, uh, made as a video and put it here so that you can go through this uh, video if you have any doubts or if you stuck up somewhere. Thank you. All the best. Thanks, Sumana. Thanks for taking us through the uh, journey on the learning management system. And of course, uh, uh, any support that's needed from the technology end, we are definitely there to provide. Over to Dr. Shailaja. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sumana, uh, for uh, uh, explaining ab about learning management system to our learners. Now, feeling gratitude and not expressing. It is like wrapping a present and not giving it. It's not happiness that brings us gratitude. It's gratitude that brings us happiness. No matter what language you speak, a kind and smiling thank you always speaks to everyone's heart. I request Mr. Mahendran, sir, to give the oath of thanks. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, seeking the blessings of His Holiness Swamiji, I am privileged to propose the vote of thanks for this online induction program of Pharmaco Diploma in Pharmacovigilance. First, I would like to thank our beloved Pro Chancellor, sir, Dr. B. Suresh, for his constant support and encouragement. We also thank him for conceiving an idea anywhere, anytime learning. So that is a mantra of our online education program, without which the concept of online programs would have not been possible. Thank you very much, sir. We thank our Vice Chancellor, sir, Dr. Surinder Singh, for accepting our invitation and being the chief guest of this induction program. I profusely thank Honorable Pro Chancellor, sir, and Vice Chancellor, sir, for spending their valuable time in discussions and adding their inputs in final wetting of the course content, which given up a proper shape for the entire course. We thank our respected register, Dr. B. Manjanatha, sir, Dr. Kushalapa, Director Academics for their encouragement and support and providing all the administrative related requirements. We thank Dr. Dakshayani, madam, Director of Center for Distance and Online Education for our meticulous planning and execution in the development of online programs. We thank Dr. Surindra Bhatt, sir, Controller of Examinations, and Dr. Madhusudan Prohit, sir, Deputy Controller of Examination, for their support extended from the examination section. Thank you very much, sir. We would like to thank our beloved principal, Dr. T.M. Pramod Kumar, JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysore, and Dr. S.P. Dhanapal, sir, Principal, JSS College of Pharmacy, Wuti, for the constant support guidance throughout the entire process. I like to express my thanks to Dr. M. Ramesh, Professor and Head, Department of Pharmacy Practice, Dr. Shri Arshad Chalsani, Assistant Professor and Program Coordinator for this Diploma in Pharmacovigilance, and all other teaching faculty members from the Department of Pharmacy Practice, and our external subject expert, Dr. Shunita Srinivas, for their contribution towards the development of course content. We extend our thanks to Mr. Dattakumar, sir, uh, from the Enhanced team, who has been supporting us with the learning management system, which made the program more lively. Special thanks to Dr. Prashant Vishwanath, sir, IQAC coordinator, JSS HER, Dr. Vishal Kumar Gupta, sir, Dr. Prashant S, yes, uh, deputy director, uh, academics, Dr. Ravindra, chief information officer, JSS HER, and Dr. Sailaja from CDOE for their support in this entire online program. Finally, we thank all the participants and the prospective students for their presence in this online induction program. Thank you one and all and happy learning. Thank you everybody for your active participation. I thank one and all. The learners can expect a mail 
in which you will be getting the credentials and the steps for which you have to follow. Along with this, I also request the learners who have not filled the application form to kindly do so immediately. Thank you one and all.